Hey everybody, Live Overdrive here. This is episode 20? 19? Don't remember, you'll have to check the title for the exact number. Um, but this is Let's Play Betrayal of Krogor, and we're just starting chapter 2. You can see our party now consists of James, Owen, and L Gorth, instead of Locklear, Owen, and Gorth. And we're just about to leave the Krondor sewers, I believe. Yes. Just take a left here and head on out. Owen looked up the narrow stairwell. It was a definitely a way up, but he questioned whether it was the right way for them to be going at the moment. What do you think, James? He asked. Feel like climbing all the way back up? Yes, we do. They made their way out of the reeking blackness. And we are back in Karandor. Looks like the items hidden in the hole there are not restored. Uh, but that's okay. Let's, uh, first things first, let's head to the shop. Gorth snorted. The market district in Karandor, he said, containing his amusement. Why don't we just take all our possessions and give them away instead? The markers are thick as porridge in there. The local merchants hike out the prices accordingly. We're better off buying outside the city. And nevertheless, we're going in. Um, we have some stuff to sell, I believe. Um, yes, we have some elven armor. Um, and we have this brooch that he probably... Oh, actually, he will buy it. Um, I'm going to keep the Elium's heart, because we used that in the Sathanon fights, and that was useful. Um, let's see if he'll buy the horn. He will not. I don't know if anybody buys that, to be honest. Um, let's see. Is there anything else here? We got a bunch of food. We can sell some rope. Yeah, get rid of that. And... Yeah, I guess we'll just hang on to everything else. Um, cool. Yeah, well, we'll see if he'll buy the... No, he won't buy the, the booze. That's alright. Okay. Let's, uh, let's head to the other shop then. Same text intro. This is the jewelry shop. Um, let's see if they will buy our ale. Yeah, I didn't think they would. Um, I'm gonna sell these Saronic Warls just... No, not here I'm not. <laughs> That's okay. Well, maybe we'll just use those or something. We've got a lot of food uh, for now, which is good, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Let's hit the road. Uh, first things first, though. Uh, we can come to the inn now, because it's a new chapter. We can go ahead and bard. Uh, unaware, until he had stepped into the room, that he had been chilled, James was glad to have the solid oaken door of the room closed behind him. Others within seemed likewise contented as they chatted quietly among themselves, taking little notice of the new arrivals. Let's bard first. Owen played, his fingers slid easily over the lute's fingerboard as he moved between the chords of this kingdom of mine, the notes filling him up, as well as guiding him forward. Quietly, he began to sing the refrain. This kingdom of mine, with blood I pay, yes. When he had finished with the tune, he found his audience was sitting in stunned silence, their gazes all fixed on him. That was beautiful, the tavern keeper said, reaching into his pouch. He removed 189 sovereigns and placed them in Owen's hand. Not a bad payment. All right, I want to talk to this weird looking dude. Um, who was a friend of Locklear's. I want to see what he has to say to James. James grinned. Seated behind one of the benches was an old associate, Nivik, Lord Minister of Finances of the Western Realm. Oh, he's like a nobleman. Okay. A loyal subject of Arutha, he befriended both the senior Locklear, both he and Senior Logler during their scramblings about in Krondor's streets, and had taught the both of them a good deal about the workings of the kingdom's finances. Looking down the considerable length of his nose, he greeted them cheerily. Senior James, what a pleasant treasure to see you. Pleasure is mutual. How are the ledgers of the kingdom, Nivik? Think we shall have enough money to keep the kingdom running for the year? Ledges are at balance, but I dare say my thirst suffers a deficit of catastrophic proportions. Though I handle thousands of sovereigns a day, I fear I haven't the command of more than a handful for my own use at the moment. I don't suppose you might be in a position. What say you, Owen? Do we buy a drink for the honorable tax collector, or do we allow him to expire of thirst? 
I guess we're playing as Owen in this chapter. Yes, we do. Bartender, drink for the tax collector. Drink up, friend, and tell me what you know. You've always had a good ear for the happenings in and out of the kingdom. Rumors, my goodness me, I'm not the kind of consort with rumor mongers. No, sire, you shall know that. Of course, I do occasionally hear a few facts that are of interest to people accounting. It is a fascinating business, you know, all the figures and such. Something a little more lively, if you please. Stolen cows, cheating wives, dishonest traitors, that sort of thing. Uh, prurient and scatological, eh? Hmm, well, let me think on it. I believe I heard something last week. Uh, at least I believe it was last week. Maybe it was the week before that. Couldn't have been before that annexation in Malax Cross. If you please, Nivek, we would like to get out of here before tomorrow. I, uh, it would be most pleased to accommodate you, but it seems my mouth has grown a bit dry. Uh, what do you say to buy me another drink? Hmm. I think I see what he's doing here, but let's play along for now. Ah, now that's much better. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yes, about the story. There was a fellow that lives near Sethanon who had filled three new claims on land in the past year. Th three, you understand that? Is there something suspect about his purchases? Oh, his selections of land are nice enough, prime pieces of land, matter of fact, but he is without a, a title. House person of ignoble birth managed by three prime estates. Tell me that. What was the fellow's name? Perhaps we should look into it. What kind of question what kind of question is that now? You you think I carry my ledger about in my head? I mean you might as well ask me the name of the Prince of Ruth's uh, Prince of Ruth's wife. You mean to tell me that you can't remember Prince Anita's name? What well, no, what is her name? You were telling me about a man near Sethanon. What else do you know about him? Tell me about the man. Uh, I think his name was Fibber. No, that's not right. Not right at all. Fle Fleeber, Monks, Finger, Maps, F Flipper, Fever, Fieber, Maxi Fieber. That's it. You know, I'm really getting tired now. N maybe I should go home. There's still a few things I need to know. Think you can hold out for just a few more minutes? Uh, sure, I can't need some to, to drink that you uh, buying. Sure, we'll buy another drink, although this guy, frankly, could stand to sober up, I think. Ah, uh, that hit the, uh, 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 what? I suppose they mean that your drink, uh, hit the mark. Why don't you tell us a little more about this Max Fever character? Ah, that's, uh, that's boring. Let's talk about last year. Did you know that for every cow in mid Kemia we get uh, golden sovereigns a year alone just for their uh, manure? Did you know that? I uh, bet you didn't. And uh, for every duck, Max Fieber. I want to know about Max Fieber. Uh, okay, Maxi Flipper. Uh... I know that he was trying to buy up some property left in Seth a few years back from Jared Lacro, but Jared wouldn't sell to no one, so Moxie cooked up this idea. Sure, sure, you don't want to hear about the ducks? No, just tell me about Max. What did he do? He uh, got himself a shovel and dug a... Trying to scare Jared. Cursed Jared. Wasn't scared of nothing, but sure frightened him. Nia, uh, what was he digging up? Gotta sleep now. Good night. Maybe I could buy you another drink. Well, I haven't. Haven't you run out of money yet? Oh, in that case, I'll have another one if you're buying. Yes, our graveyard near Sethanon. That's where he was digging up uh, free ghosts and Jared and what not. Just uh, no, no. Where do you think he gets the funds to buy the land? He said he got it in a hole. All the monkeys. Money's in the hole. Just gotta go get it. Ain't afraid of ghosts. What hole are you talking about? Where's he going? I think I go home now. One more tango to veil to keep him going? Yes. And this I'm a criminal. I'm What? I 
don't understand. I said I'm gonna be sick. Okay, okay, I think I've abused you enough for now. Sleep well, Nivik. I think we know all we need to know. Well, that was... I've never seen that before. <laughs> that was something else. Um, he was talking about stuff that we're going to see later in this chapter. Um, one thing I've noticed about this game, watching playthroughs and playing myself now here, is that um, they actually do a really good job of signposting and foreshadowing stuff. Um, it seems like they'll give you a couple of hooks if you just kind of talk to people around, you'll usually find, like, maybe one or two people who kind of point you in the right direction. And that's kind of neat. Um, because it makes it feel organic. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's very cool. It makes the game, I think, easier than you see with a lot of these older games. I think probably particularly Sierra Adventure games, where... They're just really hard because you got to find these details, like tiny details, and do all this, you know, moon logic nonsense. But um, this game is really, really good at very naturally and organically signposting what you need to do next. Like he, or even just giving you foreshadowing. Like he was just telling us things that might help us later, um, but they're certainly going to provide context for stuff that'll happen later, which. I guess you guys don't know yet, but I do. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of fun. All right, we got an innkeeper and a barmaid. Um, I don't know if we need to talk to the innkeeper, actually. Let's find out. All right, we're all full health. I, I figured that probably would happen over uh, over the chapter break. Oh, cool. Okay. Um, I wonder if we can go straight back to the palace now that we're, you know, out. James stared at Owen. After all the trouble we went through to avoid being noticed, don't you think it would be a bit stupid to stroll back through the gates? James fumed. Let's get headed to Romney before we're spotted. Alright, I guess we gotta leave. That's fine. <laughs> Party's barding ability has increased. That's probably gonna be Jimbo. No, must be Garth. Indeed, it is. Alright, so James is not good at anything but stealth. He's, I mean, he's pretty good at lockpicking. Uh, I mean, he's certainly better than Locklear started out, but uh, now, no. So, some of these things like lockpicking um, and maybe armor craft and weapon craft, I'm gonna, at some point, take the time to grind up to full but I'm not going to do that during an episode. Uh, the one thing that we can have him do, though, and we are going to do right now, is we can give him this book, which is Thiefel's Bird Migrations, if you recall from several episodes ago. Um, and that's going to make all of his stats go up. So I'm going to give a quick picture of what he's got right now. And I'm putting his accuracy melee as the only focused skill because I want that one to go up the most. Um, and then I'm going to have him read the book and we'll see if it goes from 41%. And many times James flicked back to the cover of the book to reaffirm that the title had in some way been connected to the migration of birds. While the author had begun a discussion on winged wildlife, he had quickly meandered into a discussion of the famed battles of Midkemia, continued on to a reiteration of various battle songs, diverted to a rant about the prices of ale in the kingdom's taverns, tangentially lamented about the plight of magicians, and then ended on a humorous anecdote about his mother-in-law having consumed a vial of Fatimar's formula to outslug a Sarani warrior in a bar brawl. So with that book read, yeah, okay, so everything went up, and his accuracy melee has gone, I didn't take a note of everything, but the melee went from 41 to 48. Um, that's pretty good. And everything else, I think, went up by five. Um, so that is a good gain. Um, that's that's in the direction we want to be heading. But of course, we're going to need to we're going to need to work on that, and that means I'm going to leave that one as the only marked skill of his, and uh, we're just going to uh, do some combats. Um, one thing I've learned I don't know if I mentioned this, but the the rule of having three things highlighted is not like 
necessarily optimal. It's just that that tends to be a sweet spot for people's, um, like that people have found it is pretty good. Um, your focused skill gets some amount more. And if you focus more skills, it's like divided evenly. That amount more is divided evenly between them all. So like for Goreth, I don't care as much about his defense as his accuracy melee. And not even his accuracy crossbow. I really just want to get his accuracy melee up. So I'm really just going to leave that flagged. Um, same goes for James. For Owen, his casting is already very high. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Um... And I, I think I, I do want his defense to go up, so I'll, I'll leave both of those flagged. I don't think we need to up his stealth anymore. We're pretty good there. All right. Good. Gosh, we have so much stuff in our inventory already, and we're just setting out on an adventure as is. That's okay. All right, it's the middle of the night. Let's wait till morning. A lot of our inventory is food. That is true. Okay, so let's take a look. So for this chapter, we are headed up to Romney in the east here. Um, so there's two paths we could take. We could go north um, along the roads that we've been on already, up to Tenors and Sethanon and Lighten. Um, we could go straight east to Darkmoor, Malik's Cross, Sildon. I'm, I'm kind of inclined to go east because we haven't covered that ground before. Um, but we also haven't been... We well, yeah, have been to Sethanon. Um, we also haven't been to this road between Sethanon and Lighten, but I guess that's not a big deal. However, I wanted to go to the tavern in Tenors um, to look at a particular exploit there. It's not one that I'm actually going to use, but I did want to check it out and see if it's real and then talk a little bit about it because I have some theories that I want to at least share and see if anybody uh, can correct me because I would love to learn more about it. So why don't we start by heading north? I bet I bet we'll run into some combats along the way too. So that'll be that'll be fun too. Okay, but then now the question is which way is it on the path? I think it's this fork. We will find out shortly, I think. Uh, can't tell yet. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll just keep walking our usual path situation. I imagine there will be fresh bad guys to fight. I think they mostly reset between chapters. Um, but I've been wrong before, so. Gosh, I hope they do reset. It'd be kind of boring if we have to cover ground we've already covered without new combats. Come on, one more Adele warrior wandering around, ready to attack us. Anybody? Gosh, it sure is silent here. <laughs> well, we gotta be approaching tenors now. Okay, we did take the right road, that's good. Cornfield, well, here's the town. Tenors. Alright, so I wanted to check out this inn. James sniffed, stepping just inside the tavern's door where he detected the faint but familiar scent of lye and the more pungent aromas they were meant to erase. It would be a foolish tavern keeper who neglected to have a cleaning boy close at hand where they'd men drank to excess. Alright, Tom's Tavern. If you remember correctly, this is where we found, um, the collector sort of in unsuccessfully um, or rather I missed the text in which we found the collector but yes in the last chapter we found that kind of crime lord shakedown guy and sent him to the temple to be arrested um, but what I have found out is um, first of all let's bard Owen plays. We get 31 sovereigns. Lovely. Um, interesting that it's 31. That is curious. Okay. Um, because I'm pretty sure the first time we came here, it was exactly 100, which I found odd. Um, but it's only 31 this time, which is interesting. Um, now I want to talk to this guy. 
shifty-eyed man motioned them over. Boys, he said, Snake Eyes Spitzer's the name. You feeling lucky tonight? You're looking lucky. How about a game of dice? Gambler looked up, making a fist. He shook it under James's nose, then smiled wickedly as he opened his palm to reveal a pair of dice. The game is dice, my friend, the gambler said, sitting back down. Winner wins half as much as he bets. How much gold will you wager? We'll just do five. Ruthia smiled on them, scooping up his shining wings as graciously as possible. James deposited their one sovereigns with as much discretion as possible. I hope you'll have better luck in the future, James said with a nod. Uh, we'll do five again. Okay, James ruled poorly. Uh, frowned at, uh, James ruled poorly, frowning at the unfortunate turn of events. He reluctantly handed over the sovereigns he had bet. The game is yours, sir, he said. Alright, so we've lost the dice. Um, James shook his head. You've had quite a good run of luck by the look of you, he said. We, alas, have not been so fortunate. Perhaps someone else will play with you. Cool. So now we get a bard again. It works. And this time we get 80 sovereigns. Interesting. Now if we go to bard again. Owen oh, stormed the loot. Before you get started, I think you should know that we've been tapped out of our entertainment fund, the tavern keeper said quietly. If you play here, it'll only be for your own amusement. Fine. But now if we talk to the gambler again. And we gamble. James ruled poorly, so we lost. Good. Leave. And then we barred again. And it works. And we get 80 sovereigns. So... Uh, two things happened here. One, it reset the barding thing when we lost. The dice thing. Two, the amount changed to 80. Um, which is a nice round number. It's not a hundred though. So this is either a bug or an intentional cheat. And I could see it going either way, but I sort of suspect that this is intentional. Um, because this was made in, you know, 93 when debugging tools were less sophisticated or available than they are now so that was the origin of a lot of the cheat codes that you had like the the famous you know konami code um whatever it is up up down down ba i don't remember it exactly but um, those were put in there and eventually shipped with the game because having a separate build was just not a viable option um, but they were codes that were in there for like the beta testers and anybody doing any kind of debugging to You know Be able to get to the parts of the games that they needed to get to test things out. So my theory is this in is here and this exploit is here so that for testing the game somebody can come in and quickly get um, a lot of money Basically, you can just do this over and over, go back and forth between these two and just get a whole bunch of money and be able to get whatever you need from the shops. Um, that's my theory. And actually, there's kind of one more thing that I'd like to test out with this, which is I wonder if you still get 80 sovereigns if you're bad at barding. Because my initial thought was, okay, you can go north. Actually, I think the shop in town here sells a training loot. So you could just train your barding up to full and then do this over and over again. But if it's specifically 80, even if you're bad at it, I wonder, I wonder then if that would be on purpose so that you don't even have to bother with that. I don't know, it's food for thought. I could get our guys injured so that we suck at barding and then try it, but I it's probably not worth our time, but yeah, so that's kind of neat to see. We obviously don't have any shortage of money, and frankly, I, for some reason, I draw the line between um, just grinding something over and over again to get free money and doing an actual exploit. Even though the outcome is the same, I, I guess it just feels better to me to not use like something that's not part of the actual rules of the game i don't know if that really makes sense or not but <laughs> that's how i feel about that 
Anyway, let's go ahead and get on the road here. Party's barding has increased. Probably Gareth again, that would be my guess. Yes, since he was so low. Hey, James too. Nice. Obviously not Owen because he's, you know, the best bard there ever was. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, I guess let's check out some of these houses and tenors. Um, Owen tried the door. This building appears to have been abandoned. They locked up after themselves, he said. Do you think we should take a shot at opening it up? Yes. Um, geez, I don't remember. Did we get... No, none of them have particularly good lockpicking right now, so we'll see how this goes, I guess. That's right, because we couldn't... We could only... We could only train one person's lockpicking at a time. Whoever has the best lockpicking in the party gets to train. So in this case, it's James. Lock was simple. As the old saying goes, locks are for children and fools, James said. After a few seconds, he flipped the pick locks into the air and caught them again. I am no fool. Same line as Locklear. James pushed open the door. This place is abandoned, Gorth said, looking around the room. Maybe the occupants left something behind we could use. Let's have a look. Nothing. We've already been in here. <laughs> and it doesn't refresh between chapters, apparently. All right, that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and check out this shop. Hamel's Pawn. The shop was littered with cast-offs, forgotten trinkets, lost items which few would want or need to reclaim. Here it seemed that tarnish and rust were the things that were prized, the items to which they clung of only secondary value. Um, so we got some keys, Ring of Prander, there's that practice loot I was talking about. Um, yeah, okay. The only thing that I am thinking of is maybe we can sell this horn finally. Ah, no, he won't buy it either. Dang it. All right, that is fine. Um, maybe he'll buy the ale. 14 sovereigns. Sure, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> All right. Okie dokie, well, why don't we head on back uh, south toward Krondor, and then we'll go ahead and get on the road uh, east and actually start this chapter. <laughs> Gorth yawned. We need rest, he said, looking around for a good place to make camp. If we go much further without sleep, we might not be able to handle any unexpected surprises on the road. You're right, Gorth. You're right. All right, we'll rest till morning. Everybody's still full health. And here's the crossroads. By the way, what I was doing there is I had locked... This locks you to the road. Um, and you can just walk along it. I haven't been using it much. Um, because I kind of prefer to manually turn and look around. But it is great if you want to cover a whole bunch of ground at once. You can just hold down forward. Okay, so we are now looking at territory that we've not been on yet. It looks like we're going up this northern path here, but we're not. We're headed to east toward Darkmoor. So this is new, new territory. The road led east. Halting for a moment to ponder his options, James stared off in the direction of the kingdom's populated heartland. We'll pass through Malak's Cross or Sethanon if we head this way. Think that's the best idea? That doesn't make sense to me because those are on two different forks, but I'll just go ahead and say yes for now. The landscape flattened. Slowly the hills and trees began to thin, far more sparse than the grassy midlands of the kingdom. Alright. So, fewer trees here, I guess. So far it doesn't look that different, but limitations of the time, I suppose. Um, let's take a look at where we are on the map. Yeah, it appears we have... we're right at Darkmoor. Yeah, they said Malik's Cross or Sethanon, but Sethanon is not here. Odd. Oh well. Maybe he just meant it's like we could loop back and go to Sethanon, I guess. Oh, because there's probably not a... So there's a... There's a jump here along this river just to the west of us. There's another jump along this river over here to the east of Tenors and west of Sethanon. So it's probably like loading a different section of map. Um, 
and Sethanon is in that section of map, so maybe that's what they meant by that. That could be, we'll go with that. <laughs> All right, so this appears to be Malik's Cross. Nope, sorry, Darkmoor. <laughs> and that's what the sign says, so let's check it out. We got a couple of houses and a barn and a shop. Let's head to a house first. After knocking several times, James had just about concluded that no one was home. Come on, he said, in Gorth's general direction, there doesn't seem to be anyone about. Just as he was preparing to leave, a shuffling sound inside the house caught his attention. Hello, is anyone there? He shouted. For several more seconds, he heard nothing but the silence, and again he was about to leave. This time a hoarse whisper stopped his exit, though he couldn't make out what the voice on the other side of the door was saying. You'll have to speak a little louder. We're just passing through, but we'd like to talk to you. Oh, sorry, this is James, not the not somebody hard of hearing inside. You'll have to speak a little louder. We're just passing through, but we would like to talk to you, James said. Come back when the sun is no longer in the sky, croaked a voice, and I will tell you about the Rasulki. Hissing emphasis was placed on this last word, and James tried to get some further further information. But he was greeted with naught but silence. Come on, he said. Let's get going. I'm still working on James's voice here. I'm basing him off of a character I played in a Call of Cthulhu game a couple of years back. Um, well, I guess it was just about a year back, but um, <laughs> I keep trying to lapse into Locklear's voice unconsciously um, and adding that, like, uh, whatever some generic British accent to it but I'm sure I'll get the hang of it after a few episodes here all right so he wants us to come back when the sun is no longer in the sky so let's go ahead and wait till oh excuse me one hour after dusk okay so it's nighttime so hopefully this person will talk to us now. After knocking several... This is the same text. Come back when the sun is no longer in the sky. I will tell you about the result. Okay. So it must still be slightly dusk. Yeah, I think it just got a little bit darker. The moon hung in the cloudy sky like a pale lantern. Come in, said a gruff voice. They opened the door to a small dwelling and walked into a room lit by close to a hundred candles. Shadows danced crazily on the walls, a sight so distracting it took James several moments, for he noticed the strange old woman sitting cross-legged on the floor. No words were exchanged, but they walked across the room and sat on the floor in front of her. I shall speak of the Rasalki. As the woman spoke, she began to rock gently back and forth, her gravelly voice taking on a song-like quality. Innocence lost, lost, spring blossoms robbed of carnal bliss, the goddess of death, their first kiss, their first kiss. Candlelight flashed in the wetness of her eyes as she continued. They will shrink away from her touch. They hate her so, hate her so. Find the magic touch, or you too may feel her icy kiss. The woman's head dropped to her lap, and James got up to leave. He started to speak, but thought better of it. They left the house as quietly as possible. So that one was telling us about the Rasulki. We have fought one of those in the Dimwood Forest, where we got the spell River Song that will let us summon Rasalki. We also have the Eliam's Heart that will let us summon Rasalki. But also, I have, if you recall from a previous episode, I have the original manual of, um, uh, of this game in print. And actually, I was flipping to the page I was going to talk about, but I just noticed that there is an order form in the back of this manual for the King's Buccaneer, uh, which was, I, I think it was the, the book that was uh, coming out at the time of this game, uh, which takes place after this game. Um, <laughs> that's kind of fun. It's an order form. You can mail order the book. I am actually tempted to send this in to see if it still works. I'm sure it does not. But, uh... Wow, that is, that is kind of tempting, though. $20, I could order a copy of The King's Buccaneer. 
which I believe I have a copy of somewhere in my house, although it's possible that I gave it away when I was thinning out my book collection. Um, who knows? But that is neither here nor there. Let me open up to the page in here on the Rasulki. As I mentioned, there's descriptions of some of the enemies in the game. Oh, they got giants, they got trolls. I actually didn't know there were giants in this game. They got the Brachner that we fought at the beginning. Um, and I think the second episode it was. Okay, and then here we go, Rasulki. On the same page as the Quegian Pirate. <laughs> um, okay. A Rasulki is the restless and often deadly spirit of a drowned girl that has come back near the body of water where she died. When people are near, particularly young men, the Rasulki will attempt to lure them close enough to kill them. As spirits, the Rasulki have an ethereal presence and appear semi-transparent. Usually they take the form of a young girl with tendrils of seaweed dangling from their arms. And the picture they have appears to just be a woman wearing a dress who is slightly transparent um and in this game they look like a person wearing a blue sheet over their head but uh they are not easy to kill <laughs> the art in this manual is really fantastic um if you if you google you can find you know pdfs of this manual and actually the game on steam i realized comes with the pdf of the manual um which i did not know but now i have a print version which is far superior in my mind some of the art is great the mordell is like he looks like something straight out of conan the barbarian he's got you know bulging muscles and kind of like rugged armor and this just massive two-bit axe it's really great <laughs> uh anyway so we found out about the Rasulki, and um that's as with many things in this game is kind of foreshadowing to uh kind of signpost what's what we're what's coming up anyway let's wait till morning so we can talk to the rest of the people in this town this is a taller house that's up next on the road. I thought it was maybe an inn, but it's not. A middle-aged woman met James at the door. Good day to you, he began. The sentence hung, unfinished in the air. Come in, my aren't you fellows handsome? My name is Elizabeth. Are you married? My sister Caroline is a lovely young girl, and I think she would just be perfect for you. Would you like to meet her? Well, never mind for now. Come in, come in. As the woman drug them into the house, Gorth marveled at the way she seemed to be able to talk without ever taking a breath. My husband would agree with he was here, but he works in the mercantile. You know, the store just down the road does pretty well for himself. That's what we have at this house, too. He had the house built just for me. Can you imagine? I used to help him at the shop, and now he insists I stay here all day long. Isn't he just the sweetest man? After several more minutes, what felt like hours, James excused himself politely and they headed for the door. The woman called after them as they left, but they pretended not to hear. Rude. But, you know, have important kingdom business to attend to. That must be the mercantile there, then. Just down the road a little ways. Why don't we go there next and say hello to her husband? A bell rang. No sooner had James managed to get the door open that he found the shopkeeper, the woman's husband, was escorting him inside. Elizabeth's husband, that is. I believe that was her name. The lay of the goods store was comfortably familiar, arranged in such common sense fashion that it took only a few moments for James to locate the items which interested him. Read that one before. They reused some of these. That's okay. All right, we got... Oh, it looks like general goods. Rations. Hammer. Shovel. Torch. Rope. Oh, and books. Oh, this is the bookstore. Oh, I forgot all about this place. Okay, so... This store has... So many books. Acts of Shimada Garrison. I believe this one... Well, let's see what it says. It's spine a patchwork of cracked hide and shiny leather. New pages sandwiched between ancient sheaves of parchment. The book had been repaired numerous times during its long history. That one, I believe, trains... Assessment? Let me look at the skills that are available. I think it's assessment. Um... It's possible it's accuracy melee, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Oh, hey, our health and stamina went up. That's fun. Must have been a month since the last time that happened. Well, that's good, especially for Owen. He needs it to be able to cast. Um, back to what we were saying. Yeah, Axis Shimada Garrison, I believe it does uh, assessment. I mean, 
We'll probably buy it and read it just to find out. Chapel's armor and weapons? <laughs> Spelled really poorly. Uh, and the description digs into that too, which is fun. That's obviously uh, weapon craft, armor craft. Uh, Psalms of Dala. That one is interesting. So, um, Dala is one of the gods of defense, I guess. Um, if you recall the item uh, Dala Tail Milk, I don't think we have any right now. No, we don't. It's the purple kind, though. Um, that increases your defense temporarily. Um, and that is Dala Tail, as in of the Dala. Um, so, as you might extrapolate from that, Psalms of the Dala will increase your defense the first time you read it, and then subsequent times it will, but very slowly. Um, that is one that we're going to read for sure, because that's going to get our defense up there. Strategies of trading, uh, does your mercantile, that's, or whatever they call it in this game, uh, haggling. That's fairly straightforward. Also, we don't need it, actually, because <laughs> Owen is really good at that. Um, and then Thievil's Bird Migrations, which we have a copy of already, and uh, James just read earlier this episode. Um, that is one that we could spam to just get all of our skills way up there. I don't know if I want to do that or not, because I think it's probably pretty slow. Um, but the other advantage that that would have is uh, it would take a bunch of time and that's an advantage because over the course of that time happening our health and stamina would go up too because every month we get an extra point of each of those um but anyway i i think for now oops james checked their funds yeah okay um i think what i'm gonna do for now is go ahead and buy us a copy of Oh, it's accounts, not acts. Accounts of Shemotic Garrison. Um, I'm gonna buy us a copy of Psalms of Dala. We'll haggle for. Fair enough, the shopkeeper said with a smile. Even with the reduction, I've made a pretty profit off it. 216 sovereigns, sure. We got plenty of cash. Um, we don't need strategies of trading. Chapel's armor and weapons. James could certainly use that. We can also grind it up later, but I guess, you know, why not uh, do it the easy way, I guess. <laughs> um, let's get the Shimada Garrison one, why not? Um, haggling didn't work. Oh, and we gotta, okay, we gotta exit, that's fine. He took it off the table. That's all right, we'll try it again. It's not enough that the tax collectors bleed me twice a year. I've got to have some high and mighty in here, making me sell at a loss. The shopkeeper flared. So be it. But I won't sell it for a sovereign cheaper. 168 is not bad. I will take that. Um, and then we don't need Thiefel's bird migrations. Okay, cool. So, let's go ahead and... Um, let's see. Okay, accounts of Shimada Garrison. So I think that one does assessments. I'm going to turn off the other ones, and let's see if I'm correct. Uh, accounts of Shimada Garrison. All right. Primarily, the book was about battle. The majority of the text concerning itself with various famous skirmishes, which had been fought between members of the Kingdom Garrison at Shimada and the famed dog soldiers of the Great Empire of Kesh. Perhaps more valuable was the wealth of information which had been gathered on different fighting techniques, each detailed with illuminated diagrams on stances, swings, and other issues concerning themselves with the act of fighting. Also included in the book were a number of smaller anecdotes about standard life at the garrison, the amount of food consumed in one month by the soldiers, the cost of weapons imported from the empire, and the difficulties in purchasing goods when political swings were taking place. One story which particularly took Owen's interest was a mention that a potion called Redweed Brew was a major import of the garrison. They had claimed it temporarily enhanced how well the soldiers fought in battle. That kind of sounds like it increased his accuracy melee. Let's find out. Nope, just the assessment. Yeah. It really seems like it ought to have increased his accuracy melee, but... No... No such luck. That's okay. Um, okay, we'll give that one to Garth as well. We'll have him read that quick. Ah, uh, I should have changed his... Uh, focus, but that's okay. 
no big deal. All right, we'll give bird migration back to Owen, and we'll give this book to James. Go ahead and flag his assessment. Did I not just give the book to... Who did I just give the book to? Oh yeah, James, okay, weird. Um, all right. And... That's bumped his assessment up, good. What? Is... Oh, okay. His inventory just shrunk. I was really confused. It's... He consumed some food. Um, reading the book takes time. So, some time passed and they had to eat some food. <laughs> I was so confused. I was like, why did his inventory shrink? He must have had a stack of one single food. That'll do it. Okay, um, I don't think we need to read that one anymore because I don't really care about assessment. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell that back. 44 sockets, sure. All right, so next we've got, this is Thyphil's bird migrations. All right, we're gonna wait on that one. This one is Psalms of Dala. This is a good deal. So we're gonna turn off casting. His defense is 52, let's remember that. All right, essentially a book of prayers. Most of the Psalms dealt with the mythology surrounding the defender goddess and her frequent clashes with the war god Tith Anonka. It advised which prayers should be said upon waking, which should be used before sleeping, before eating, before entering inns, and most importantly, which should be mouthed before entering battles so that the defender goddess would add her favor to the faithful's ability to defend him or herself. It also mentioned in passing that the goddess would also lend her favor to those that drank the Delatale milk, sometimes sold by her followers. This is another thing that I really like about this game, is that without like the wiki and stuff or previous knowledge to tell you what items do, they don't necessarily tell you. Um, sometimes the item descriptions do, sometimes they don't. Um, but like they'll tell you like within the text of the game like here they're telling you oh this item can do this in the previous one they told you that oh yeah they they get redweed brew sometimes and that makes their melee skill better um i think some of the books that we read in the abbey of sarth also told us what items do i just it's just such a nice touch i really love how that works it's not it's not so mechanical. It's just a very natural way to reveal how stuff works. I don't remember what I said his defense was before we read that, but I'm sure those of you watching back can zoom back and check it out. But I expect it's gone up about seven, because um, I think that's what they do when you focus them before reading the books. All right, Gorth's turn. Make sure he turns on the right skill here. I should have looked at what he had beforehand, but 71 is what he's got now. That's really good. <laughs> wow. All right, and then we'll give that to Jimmy Boy. James is at 60. Let's see what we can get him up to now. 66, okay. So, yeah, I must do like six, I guess. Fine by me. All right. Um, this is one that we could use over and over again. I'm tempted to do so. Because um, particularly for, well, Owen's got an okay defense. Um, but you know what, I'll, uh, I'll do that some other time. For now, I'm gonna sell it back. Um, I think uh, sometime between between these episodes, uh, when I'm just watching TV or something, I'll just come back and spam some of these books, and that'll get all of their health to go up and some of their defense and stuff. Um, but I'm not going to do that in the video, because that would be incredibly boring. Um, wait, what book is that? That's Psalms of Dalek. Good. Okay. I thought I was about to sell the evil bird migrations. Which I could do. I mean, we've got plenty of cash, but <clears throat> nah, I'll hang on to it. All right. No, we're not selling that. Okay. 
Cool. Um, another time then. But that's that's very cool. All right. So some time has passed. Let's go ahead and check out this last. Oh, it's not the last house in town, but this house. James Bush opened the door. This place is abandoned. Gorth said. No, oh, excuse me. My throat is. <clears throat> Not working right. This place is abandoned, Gorth said, looking around the room. Maybe the occupants left something behind we can use. Let's have a look. Some gold. And a crossbow will not be taking. Light crossbow. Just not worth it. Ah, uh, a well. Hope it's not poisoned like the one in the dim wood. Drawing some water from the small well, they drank greedily, and stopping only long enough to fill their pouches, they packed up and prepared to leave. Lovely. Well, we got a few more. Oh, Gorth yawned. We need to rest. It's mid-morning, my guy. All right. It's because they've been up reading books. <laughs> Till all hours of the night. I mean, I've been there. I'm sure many of you have too, if you're sitting here in 2024 or later watching a video of a guy playing a video game that is over 30 years old. You're, you know, I bet you've been up till dawn reading a book before, let's just say that. Um, James pushed the door open. This place is abandoned, Gorth said, looking around the room. Maybe the occupants left something behind we can use. Let's take a look. Lockpicks, we will take those. We will not take the shovel. Because I will not be digging up any graves. I love that you can, but I will not be doing that. All right. After knocking on the small wooden door, James stood back to survey the house and its surroundings. Darkmoor seems friendly enough, he said. The door swung open, and his attention shifted to a smallish woman who greeted them with a hug. Oh my, aren't you a dear? My name is Coraline. What's your name? Before James had a chance to answer, she ushered them all inside the house. To inside, amidst a collection of knickknacks and odds and ends, no doubt collected over three quarters of a lifetime, they introduced themselves. They talked for several minutes as she refilled their water pouches with a pitcher sitting on a small wooden table in the corner. Have you seen the crazy old hen that lives down the road? She queried breathlessly. Only comes out at night. My sister Elizabeth thinks she's a witch or something. I just think she's crazy. Can't really blame her. Husband and son were both killed by evil spirits. That's what they say. Probably Rosalki, if that's the woman talking about the Rosalki. Their pouches full, they managed to work their way to the door. The woman was still talking as she closed the door behind them. A lot of that going around in this town. People love to talk, and I've got no problem with that. That's lovely. All right, this looks like an inn. James pushed open the door. As he passed through, he noted the lack of a door latch, a sign that the inn was likely chartered by the local lord to ensure the safety of travelers. Hopefully, it would also mean the inn's furnishings would be suitable. Indeed, they seem to be. Let's go ahead and bar. Oh, sorry. Within, the accommodations were humble. Several splintering tables had been jammed into the common room and arranged to accommodate perhaps 25 men. 30 of hunger passed them. Pressed them. Greasy stains covered benches and walls. Evidence of wild days passed. Oh, I did not mean to exit. Let's go back. All right, let's go ahead and bard. Owen plays a lovely tune. I'm still learning this on guitar. I'll have it one of these days. 105 sovereigns. Not bad. Alright, we got a barmaid. We got this guy we can talk to. James cleared his throat, glancing up from the business of cleaning his fingernails with a boot knife. The man regarded them frostily, motioning with the tip of his knife for them to quickly make their business known. That's a very nice knife. Cashian, isn't it? James commented carefully. Where did you chance to purchase it? The man smiled, showing them uneven brown teeth. Who said I bought it? Ah, Goroth said, taking hold of Owen's shirt sleeve. Well, I think my companion here promised me a drink before we came in, and I think it's well nigh time I collected on a good day to you. Perhaps we can speak again. How about this guy? The man scowled, apparently more intent on something going on across the common room. He seemed uninterested in James' repeated attempts to chat. Alright, it's the usual, usual discussion. Uh, innkeeper and then this person. A table was cleaned for them, sitting down on the splintered bed across from the man. James shared a bit of the mercenary's bread and listened to his story about a failed love. Yeah, we've been at this one too. Alright. Uh, innkeeper, I don't think we need that. We haven't been in a combat yet. Alright. This town is interesting. Um, in later books, Party's Barding has increased. Well, not much later, to be honest. I don't think they had been out 
at the time this game released. But the Serpent War saga um, features a character named Eric von Darkmoor, who is the bastard son, allegedly, of the Baron of Darkmoor. So Darkmoor is a bigger town than this in the books. Um, you know, it's got like a keep and everything. Um, I don't think those books were out at this point, but I could be wrong because they introduced a new creature in those books, which we actually will run into later in this game. So yeah, they probably were out at this point, or at least planned. I'm going to have to look up the timeline on that, but yeah, good books. I, I'm going to have to reread these. I they're, they're great. I think I saw a review online that described them as the most, like, standard fantasy series that you could ever imagine. And I mean, that's very true, but they're, they're great. Or at least I remember them being great when I was younger. Let's check out this house, shall we? Two more houses in town. James knocked on the door. After a few moments, a doe-faced woman answered. Doe-faced? I don't exactly know what that means, but it sounds rude. Um, answered, keeping one arm braced behind the door in case her visitors were less than congenial. Smart. What is it you want? Although she clearly was addressing James, her gaze danced nervously to the Moradel. I've had enough run-ins with strangers of late. We were looking to get a bit of water, per James started, but found the old woman had slammed the door. You don't need more water, James. You got some from the last house, and you also got some from, from the well. You guys have plenty of water. All right. Last house. James pushed open the door. This place is abandoned, Gorth said, looking around the room. Maybe its occupants left behind something we can use. Let's have a look. A peasant's key. That's fine. Probably not going to need that, but... Old Jimmy Boy is not the lockpick. Oh, excuse me, is not the lockpick that Locklear is. All right. This is going to be the signpost that says Darkmoor. Yep. And we can go ahead and continue east. And I, you know, I'm really surprised we haven't had a combat yet. It really seems like we ought to. And frankly, I'd kind of like to at this point. Nothing. What is happening? Are we already to the next town? Temple of Ruthia. Well, that is indeed a Temple of Ruthia. Um, but I think we're we're coming up about on time here, and actually my voice is kind of going out, so I sort of, um, I'm going to stop here, because pretty quickly I'm not going to be able to talk anymore at all, and who wants to watch a non-narrated Let's Play of Betrayal at Grondor? Probably somebody, but not me. Um, so with that, I'm going to sign off for now. Um, thanks for watching. Exciting that we get to start chapter two and forge ahead here with the, ch the, uh, the game. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that I'm not as interested in the power gaming aspects anymore, especially since we've pretty much have taken care of it. Um, I am going to try and get James up there, but I'm, I'm going to focus a little bit less on that. And I think focus a little bit more on, on getting through this story because these next few chapters are are real interesting and kind of fun. So, um, so yeah, that's the plan going forward and I'll see you in those next episodes. Bye now.